Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts College Football Podcast, your ticket to all things college football. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? Join us as we talk college football from the national championship to college rivalries to bowl games to the Heisman Trophy to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Nick Bowles. And today we will mainly be finalizing the predictions for the Big Ten, as well as maybe taking a look at how I think the overall college football year will play out in terms of the Final Four and Conference Champions. Typically, we like to start off with transfer moves or coaching notes, but there just is not a whole lot of those going on right now. And I am still waiting on a couple high school commits to make their decisions, most notably Zachary Evans, to sort of do a final recruiting recap episode. So I will probably wait another couple episodes until he makes his choice, along with a few others, see where the dust settles, and then probably do an episode on recruiting as a whole this year in terms of who ended up where and what the rankings look like. So to get back to the Big Ten, I'm going to start with Iowa. I've really liked Iowa's football team the last few years. Since they really haven't been known as a college football powerhouse in their history, they really have had some good teams the last couple years and in most recent history. Last year, they had another good year, 10-3 and three overall, 6-3 and three in the Big Ten. Their only losses came by way of the Michigan Wolverines, Penn State, and Wisconsin. So three decent losses, especially to Penn State. They finished out the year beating the USC Trojans in the SDCCU Holiday Bowl, 49-24, to which is a very nice win to end the year. They also beat the Minnesota Golden Gophers, who were a very good team last year as well. So overall, a very good year for them. I look for them to probably do about the same next year. Their biggest question mark will obviously be at quarterback, as Nate Stanley is leaving for the draft. And it looks like Spencer Petras, a sophomore, will replace him. And I think that Spencer Petras will be able to fill the shoes of Nate Stanley just fine. He may make a couple mistakes along the way in terms of growing pains. But Nate Stanley was not exactly someone who was throwing for 250 plus 300 yards a game and three touchdowns. Iowa relied heavily on its run game and short pass attack. And so I think Spencer Petras will be able to step in and do just fine. I don't think they will take as big a step back at that position as many think. And because of this, I think Iowa will have another good year next year. If we look at their schedule, I think they will do okay next year. I think that their schedule this year coming up is slightly harder than it was last year, mainly due to the fact that they are having to play Ohio State instead of Michigan is the main difference in this year coming up. They start the year off against Northern Iowa and Iowa State, both of which should be wins. Then they go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, to play the Golden Gophers. I am going to say that Minnesota probably gets a win this year against them at home, as well as Minnesota being another good team in the Big Ten that I look to make some noise. Then they play the NIU Huskies, which should be a win. Then they play the Michigan State Spartans, which I also think should be a win. I think Michigan State is going to struggle again this year, maybe barely over 500 or something like that. Then they have a rough stretch where they go back-to-back at Ohio State and at Penn State. I think they lose both of those games. Then they play Northwestern at home. That should be a win. And then they have a nice week off about two-thirds of the way through the season on Saturday, October 31st. Then they play at Illinois, which should be a win. Then they play Nebraska at home, should be a win. 
Then they are at Purdue, which I think will be a tough game, but I think they will win. And then they finish out the year with Wisconsin at home, which could be a tough game, sort of a toss-up game. And I see that game going either way, in all honesty. One thing I will say about Iowa is I think that they do have a pretty decent shot to win the Big Ten West. Essentially, they need to outplay Minnesota and Wisconsin, which is not exactly easy, but I do think that there's a possibility they could do it. And that being said, if they are able to get into the Big Ten Championship and have a decent game against whoever that may be, Penn State or Ohio State, more than likely, then Iowa could end up having another good year next year. I just don't see them as being that Tier 1 or that next echelon of teams that could possibly compete for a national title or get into the Final Four, especially with a new quarterback coming in. I just think that they probably end up the year maybe around the same as last year, maybe even with another loss. Again, last year they lost to Michigan, which I'm going to put in place of who they're playing this year as a replacement in terms of Ohio State. I think they lose that game. I think they lose to Penn State again, so there's another loss. And then between Minnesota and Wisconsin, if they can go 1-1, one and one, maybe they go 0-2. Oh You're looking at three or four losses again for them overall. So I think a good year for them would be another 9-3 and three performance. If they could go 10-2, and two, that would also be an amazing year for them considering the competition that they're playing. It's also very likely they could go 8-4 and four as well. So 8-4 and four to 10-2 and two is about where I see Iowa next year. And you don't know with the new quarterback coming in, perhaps they drop another game. Maybe they go 7-5. and five. It's very possible that they could do that. But I think eight and four, nine and three is about where they will end up. And if they have a good year, they'll be ten and two. Now let's say they do get into the Big Ten championship. I don't see them beating Ohio State or Penn State or whoever comes out of the Big Ten East. And I also think that whoever makes it out of the Big Ten West will probably end up going to the Big Ten championship with a couple losses. Maybe one loss if someone's able to have a breakout next year, but I still don't see them winning that game or even really having a chance, depending on who it is that comes out of the East. At the end of the day, I don't really see anyone out of the Big Ten West being able to come out and challenge for the Big Ten championship, whether it be Penn State or Ohio State, more than likely. And so therefore, I don't really think Iowa or anyone out of the Big Ten West, for that matter, is going to have a chance of getting into the Final Four or being in the finals at the end of the year. Now, if it wasn't for the question at quarterback in terms of them having a relatively unknown player stepping in to replace Nate Stanley, I would actually like Iowa a lot more. And the reason for this is that they have a lot of talent returning. I think that if they didn't have an unknown coming in at quarterback, that their offense could be a candidate for maybe most improved coming up this year. I think that their running backs and their wide receivers are very good, or at least the talent that they are returning at those positions, I think, is something that if they had another year with Nate Stanley, the offense would take a very big leap. Their running back is a good mix of playmakers, short yardage, and third down backs. They're, they have a sophomore returning at running back, named Tyler Goodson, who showed very good things in terms of being able to make plays as a freshman. They also have two seniors coming back, Mikai Sargent and Torin Young, both of which are a good mix of sort of lightning and thunder in terms of one being a short yardage and the other being a third down passing back. And I think if you're able to sprinkle those guys in with Tyler Goodson and make some plays that are easy for the quarterback coming in, then I think their offense could actually do pretty well next year. And if they had a sort of veteran quarterback coming back, then I think their offense would take a very big step. They also have wide receivers Brandon Smith, Tyrone Tracy, Smith Marset, and Nico Raggiani coming back, two of which are sophomore and two of which are senior. And apparently they have not had this much returning experience at wide receiver in about a decade. So that's a good sign for them in terms of having some consistency at the position. I also think that their offensive line is going to be much better next year, which is why it just sort of is bad timing for them. Because if I think if they were having a senior comeback at quarterback or the consistency that they've had the last four years from the position, then I think their offense could do some pretty good things next year. 
and could surprise some people. But unfortunately, they have a sort of unknown coming in, and I think that's going to inhibit them a little bit. Now, the kid could come in, whoever it is, whoever wins the, the battle for the position, and they could absolutely overperform, and the offense could still take that next big step. But I just can't really feel confident about that in terms of it being their first year. You think that they're probably going to have a game or two where the quarterback has a bad game simply because it is his first year, maybe makes a dumb play or two, and so that's why I can't just say that their offense is going to be amazing. But overall, I think that their offense is returning a lot of experience, and I think it's going to take a big step forward as well as always having that good defense that they seem to have year in and year out. So when we come back, I will go ahead and move on to Wisconsin. And then I will finish up the next segment with Minnesota as they've been quite the uh, shock of last year and the last couple of years. So stay tuned and we'll talk about that next. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. segment two we're rounding up and finishing up our big 10 schedules for next year i'm going to go ahead and do wisconsin now and just for the record i'm not going to do michigan state uh they went seven and six last year i believe and with their coaching dilemma that's going on i just don't see them perhaps getting their footing and having a good year this year i think they'll do about the same a little over 500 so I'm just going to leave Michigan State off on the side for now. Perhaps if some things change, I might come back. But um, in terms of being maybe more of the exciting teams in the Big Ten next year, I'm just not quite seeing it yet. So if we look at Wisconsin, last year they went 10-4. and four. Good year for them, 7-3 and three in the Big Ten. Actually played in the Big Ten Championship against the Ohio State Buckeyes, which they lost 34-21. to 21. There are two losses during the regular season came by an upset win by Illinois in Illinois against the Badgers 24 to 23 and they lost to Ohio State which obviously is understandable and respectable even though they did lose 38 to 7 which is not a good loss but losing to Ohio State is sort of expected they had good wins against Iowa 24 22 they also beat Minnesota 38 to 17 they beat the Michigan Wolverines 35-14. to 14. And so overall, I think they had a pretty good year last year. The strength of schedule was very decent. Uh, they did end up losing in the Rose Bowl game by a point to Oregon, 28-27. Uh, to 27. So they did not end the year probably the way they wanted, but they did have three losses during the regular season if you include the Big Ten Championship game, which is always an accomplishment to get to any conference championship. So... If we take a look at their schedule for next year, uh, I do like it a little bit more. They don't have to play Ohio State, although they have to play Notre Dame instead. And they don't have to play Michigan State and instead are going to be playing Appalachian State. If we look at how they start the year, they play Indiana, Southern Illinois, and Appalachian State back-to-back-to-back at home to open up the season. I think it'd be very good for them to get a win against Appalachian State, which is not necessarily a given. Considering that Appalachian State was ranked in the top 20 by almost all polls at the end of the year last year, 
And so for them to go 3-0 and at home to start off the year, I think, is pivotal. They need to win that Appalachian State game because the next three games coming up will be very difficult for them. They go and play Michigan in Ann Arbor. They play the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And then they play the Minnesota Golden Gophers at home. So they have a very tough start to the year. Uh, if you look at their competition, I mean, Indiana and Southern Illinois to start off the year is essentially where the fun ends and the real games begin. They then play Appalachian State, Michigan Wolverines, Notre Dame, and Minnesota Golden Gophers all in a row, back to back to back to back. Two of those are on the road, one's at a neutral field, and the last game against Minnesota during that stretch is at home. They then have a what I think is a much-needed week off, Saturday, October 17th. Even though it's slightly early in the season for the seventh week, I think it's good for them to have a week off after that stretch of games. Then they play Maryland at College Park, Maryland. They play the Fighting Illini at home. They then go to Wrigley Field to play the Northwestern Wildcats. They are then at Purdue. And then they play Nebraska at home and then go on the road to finish off at Iowa. Wisconsin, unfortunately, just due to their schedule, I just see them perhaps dropping a few more games than they did last year. Now, remember, they went 10-2 and before the Big Ten Championship game. And I think this year they're going to maybe lose another game or two. I think during the stretch, Appalachian State, Michigan, Notre Dame, and Minnesota, those four games, I just see them going 2-2. Two and two. If they can somehow go 3-1, and one, then that would be pretty amazing, I think. They can beat Michigan, obviously. I just see Appalachian State maybe getting one away on them for some reason. Again, Appalachian State is not necessarily an easy team, but I do think that they should be able to beat Appalachian State and Michigan. And then they play Notre Dame and Minnesota. And while I think Wisconsin is probably better than all these teams, except for maybe Notre Dame, I kind of see them as being equals. I just have a feeling that they drop one or two here. And then having to finish out the year in Iowa City against Iowa, I think is also a tough game. Again, they lost to Illinois last year. Maryland could have a bounce back year. They started out really hot last year and then just couldn't couldn't pull it together, couldn't finish it, couldn't keep it going. Northwestern at Wrigley Field, Purdue and Nebraska. I mean, I could see them maybe giving one of those up, but I would think those are wins. And then at Iowa is another possible loss. I think they go nine and three next year, maybe ten and two again before the possible Big Ten championship game. I think that last game of the year at Iowa could very well possibly decide who plays in the Big Ten championship from the Big Ten West depending on how the Minnesota Golden Gophers do, who we'll do next segment. And so just taking a look at the fact they play those four tough games before the bye week, as well as finishing the year off at Iowa, I just think that they maybe get to three losses before the Big Ten Championship game, and I just really feel 9-3 and three is a good place for them to be at next year. Maybe they go 10-2 and two again. It's very well possible that they could. If Wisconsin loses two or three games and has a chance to get to the Big Ten Championship game, I think it likely will ride on the last game of the year against Iowa and I have a feeling Iowa is going to have a slight edge at home and will probably win that game look for Iowa to maybe be able to play spoiler or upset next year out of the Big Ten West maybe give the other team who comes out of the East some fits but I think it will largely come between Wisconsin and Iowa that last game of the year Unless the Minnesota Golden Gophers are able to do something, which we will do next segment. So stay tuned. I'm going to officially wrap up the Big Ten. So stay tuned. I'm officially going to wrap up the Big Ten by finishing off with the Golden Gophers. And then we will get into some storylines for next year and who I think the Final Four and Conference winners will be. So stay tuned. We'll talk about that next. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. March on with the Big Ten schedule coming up for next year with Minnesota. Minnesota was probably the surprise team of the year last year. Went 11 and 2 overall, 7 and 2 in the Big Ten. Didn't go to the Big Ten championship game, um, but they did have a very nice end of the season against the Auburn Tigers in the Outback Bowl, which they beat 31 to 24. It was a very nice capping to their season. Most end of the year polls had them around 16 to 18, depending on which one you looked at. So they finished in the top 20 at the end of the year. I thought perhaps they could have been ahead of teams like Utah at the end of the year or even Auburn, who they beat. I think they should have ended up being ranked ahead of at the end of the year. But all that aside, they essentially finished in the top 20. I thought they should have been more like top 15, but that's just my opinion. I unfortunately see them sort of taking a step back next year, not because of their offense, which I think will be back in full force, but is because they are missing a lot of their defense. They only have four returning starters, and I just feel like this is going to end up costing them a game or two in which they would have otherwise not lost had their defense maintained. Had their defense came back 100%, I think the offense, typically it only improves year to year if you're returning the same guys. And I think possibly that they could have probably won the Big Ten West and could have actually put up a fight, whoever they played against, in the Big Ten Championship game. However, because they are losing so much on defense, I just think that they're going to end up dropping a game or two and probably will not make the Big Ten Championship game. And if we take a look at their schedule last year, they lost two games to Iowa and another one to Wisconsin. Both of these were in the last three games of the year, and these games also came off them beating Penn State 31-26, to which was a very good win for them. Now, other than the Penn State win, however, they really did not have another impressive win uh, until they got to their Outback Bowl in which they beat Auburn, which gave them their second best win of the year. But they barely lost to Iowa 23-19. They did lose to Wisconsin pretty heavily 38-17. Considering the fact they didn't have any really big wins last year except for Penn State, which is a good one, don't get me wrong, but it was their only good win heading into the bowl season, as well as going into double overtime with Fresno State, which is not a good Good look. This year, I think things are only going to get harder for them, and I expect their defense to be a bit of a liability. And so if we just go down the list, we'll start off Thursday, September 3rd, Florida Atlantic Owls, that should be a win. Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles, I think that should be a win. And then they start to get into some actual games. They play Iowa the third week of the year. I think Iowa wins this game, even though it's in Minneapolis. Then they have to play BYU at home as well. I think that's a tougher game than most people think it will be. I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. But I look for Minnesota to probably win that game. Then they have to go to Maryland and play in College Park, Maryland. Again, I think this will be a lot of points scored. This could be one of those games where because their defense is probably not where it needs to be I could see Maryland coming away with a possible upset here if that Maryland offense is clicking and is performing more like they were in the first half of the year 
compared to the second half of last year. This could be one of those games where the last team with the ball wins. So after Maryland, they then play Wisconsin on the road. I think Wisconsin wins this game. I think because the defense will struggle, Wisconsin will be able to eat a lot of time off the clock, have good drives, and essentially keep it out of Minnesota's offense's hands. And this will ultimately lead to a win for Wisconsin. Then they play Michigan at home in Minneapolis. Again, I think because the defense will struggle, this will be another game where the last team with the ball may have a good chance of winning. And I think Michigan could probably pull a win off here as well. Then they go and play at Illinois. That should be a win. And then at Michigan State, which I think Minnesota should be able to win this game. But again, if the defense is struggling, uh, that could spell disaster for them in a lot of these games. But I think they beat Michigan State. Then they play Purdue. Then they have a week off very late in the year, November 14th, and end up the year playing Northwestern and Nebraska, which should be two wins for them as well. So unfortunately for Minnesota, I have them taking a step back next year. I think that defense is going to cost them a couple games. This year, I think they go... 9-3 9-3 and three at best. I think that's on the upside for them. If they can somehow go 10-2, and two, then more power to them. I think, honestly, they probably end up 9-3 and three or 8-4. and four. Um, I don't think they get to the Big Ten Championship game. And with that, that will sort of conclude our look at the Power 5 conferences for the 2020 year. At least the more notable teams. I didn't go over every team, but I went over perhaps the top 3 to 5 teams in each conference. And with that being said, I would now like to maybe look at conference winners and then maybe talk about the final four a little bit. And more notably, maybe how I would tweak the playoff system that we currently have. And since we just finished the Big Ten, I will stay here. I think that the championship game is ultimately going to be between Wisconsin and Penn State. I think Penn State is one of my spoilers or dark horses next year that I think is going to do very well and take a step forward. But essentially, I have Iowa and Wisconsin competing in the Big Ten West, and I have Ohio State and Penn State competing in the Big Ten East. And I think between Wisconsin and Iowa, I have Wisconsin perhaps getting in over Iowa due to a slightly easier schedule in terms of games that are winnable for them versus Iowa, who I think has a couple of definite losses on their season, as well as some more maybes that I think they will end up losing because of their quarterback situation. And then for Penn State, I see the defense taking a small step forward as well as the offense. And again, I am just not a huge believer in the quarterback at Ohio State. I think that if you get some pressure to him or in bigger games, he is not a true and tried quarterback in terms of a pocket passer I think he's a good college quarterback and a good dual threat quarterback but I do not think he's going to ultimately improve this year I think he was so efficient last year that he actually takes a small step back and ultimately the numbers I think he will sort of struggle with will be a few more interceptions and I think perhaps he may get hit one or two times this year that could be proven to be an injury or something of that nature as we've seen with a lot of quarterbacks that are dual threat, as well as his completion percentage, I think will go down a little bit this year. But again, Ohio State, they have such great athletes that they're probably easy targets against a lot of these teams you would consider to be lesser competition for them. But I think when they play against harder teams, I think he will struggle a little bit. And so ultimately, I have Penn State coming out of the Big Ten. That's going to go ahead and be my Big Ten winner for next year. I think ultimately they get over Ohio State this year, and essentially they will beat Wisconsin or Iowa, whichever one they play in the Big Ten championship game, by a touchdown or something like this. I think it'll be a good season overall for the Big Ten. I think they will have a lot of good teams next year. I think Iowa, Wisconsin, Penn State, Ohio State will all finish in the top 20. Also with a possible Minnesota or Michigan sliding in there as well. I look for the Big Ten to have a really good year next year across the board in terms of their depth of good competition and good teams. I think that possibly they could get five teams in the top 25 at the end of the year. And I think that's very impressive for any conference if you're able to do that. So I'm interested in seeing how the Big Ten does next year. I think there will be a lot of parity, a lot of competition for the top spot. 
And so in our next segment, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the other conference winners and then get into the final four for next year as well as some small things I would alter or change to ultimately give us a better product on the field. So stay tuned and we'll talk about that next segment coming up. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. and finish off the other conference winners and I will pick it up in the ACC. Now I won't waste our time picking the ACC Atlantic division winner which will be the Clemson Tigers but I am going to go out on a limb and actually say that the ACC Coastal division is going to be one of the more interesting divisions to watch in terms of who falls where and how it plays out. I essentially look for everyone to sort of be interesting to watch except for maybe Georgia Tech. But I think the other six teams are going to be interesting to see how their seasons play out. You have Duke with their transfer quarterback from Clemson. And it will be interesting to see if Duke is able to improve. They're going to have a vastly improved offensive line as well. Then we have Miami with the addition of their quarterback. And them looking to perhaps make a splash next year and drastically improve with that addition. Then we have Mac Brown in the Tar Heels who is one of my teams to see how they do this year. They've been doing very good in recruiting, and I'm interested to see if they can take the next step. Then we have the Pitt Panthers, which had a pretty decent year last year, played a lot of good teams close. And then we have Virginia and Virginia Tech, who have been consistently above 500 for the better part of the most recent history. And the ACC Coastal Division is honestly a very hard one to pick. I really could see it going to any one of the teams that I just mentioned, maybe minus Pittsburgh and Duke but Virginia Virginia Tech North Carolina and Miami I think are all viable and possible winners to come out of the ACC Coastal Division and I'm ultimately going to have to go with North Carolina and I think that Mac Brown is going to be the X factor or the difference in terms of them being able to take that next step and playing Clemson for an ACC title. I also could see Miami with the addition of King at quarterback really being able to do something next year. And I think those two teams have the most upside as it were. But I'm ultimately going to go with Mac Brown and North Carolina. I think perhaps he leads them out of some close games with victories instead of losses. And there will be many close games in this division, I feel like, as they jockey each other for top position in that division. And then, of course, I will ultimately have Clemson coming out of the ACC. I don't think that is a surprise to anyone. And so, so far we have Penn State out of the Big Ten, and we have Clemson coming out of the ACC. Now, if we go over to the Big 12, I think I had mentioned... In some of my previous episodes that I do have the Longhorns coming out of the Big 12 this year. Almost by default because I think Oklahoma will struggle in a couple games with a lot of younger players coming in to replace the talent that they've lost. Mainly at quarterback with Rattler. Even though I think he's going to be a good college quarterback, still you have to think that in his first year he struggles in a game or two that could be losses instead of wins and is the difference between winning the Big 12 championship and losing it. Baylor and Oklahoma State will be very interesting to see and watch how they do. I think Oklahoma State could play spoiler to some teams in the Big 12 this year 
And I think Baylor is looking to actually stay about the same of where they were. But I think that losing their coach and having perhaps a somewhat new system and playbook come in could perhaps be the difference maker in a game or two. And so ultimately, I look for Tom Herman and the Longhorns to win the Big 12. Again, they have their quarterback coming back, who I think is a very smart quarterback. I think he's a little underrated nationally. And I think think that they are going to win the Big 12 ultimately against Oklahoma or Baylor or Oklahoma State, which are the top four teams trying to win the Big 12, in my opinion. But ultimately, I think Texas comes out of the Big 12. The Big 12 will be another fun conference to watch just in terms of who ends up where. I don't think anyone out of the Big 12 is going to make the Final Four next year. I think they probably all suffer a couple losses at least that will kick them out of it at the end of the day but I have Texas coming out of the Big 12 and I think Oklahoma and Baylor and Oklahoma State will finish in a very close second third and fourth so that is the Big 12 for me we will then quickly move on over to the SEC Uh, again the SEC is going to be very fun to watch next year as there's a lot of question marks for teams like Alabama and LSU I ultimately think that Georgia is going to come out of the SEC. I think their addition at quarterback opens up the offensive playbook a little bit for Kirby Smart. And I think he's able to do some good things on offense that perhaps Fromm lacked in terms of being able to make some plays. And I think that defense obviously is going to be good as always. And I think that that will be the ultimate backbone that allows them to come out of the SEC with the addition of their offense improving with their quarterback play. Now the SEC East, I think George is a pretty safe pick out of the SEC West. There is just so many things to watch for. We have the two new coaches at Mississippi State and Ole Miss in Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin. I think the Aggies are going to look to be the spoiler this year out of the West and perhaps a dark horse. They really only have three tough games in Auburn, Alabama, and LSU that they need to win. Now, I know those are very tough games, but still, I mean... I think with LSU losing the talent that they have, they're sort of out of it by default. I think they probably slip up in a couple places. And then Alabama, with their question at quarterback, is can their offense produce enough points to win them those close games? I think that is yet to be answered. We will see. And then Auburn, I think, will also be another team to watch out for. I do not think that what they did last year was a fluke in terms of them beating some of the better teams in Oregon and Alabama. And so I think Auburn will be a very tough matchup as well. Ultimately, if I had to pick, I guess Alabama would be the good default pick. And I don't think anybody would blame me for doing that. But I really think A&M has a chance next year to sort of shake the trees and make some different things happen. But ultimately, I think Georgia prevails. I just think they have too good of a defense. And I think their offense is going to take a big step forward next year. And I think Kirby Smart will use that offense efficiently and get the job done. And so ultimately, I have Georgia coming out of the SEC. And then lastly, we have the Pac-12. The Pac-12, I think, ultimately will be won by the Oregon Ducks. I think that Arizona State and USC and Utah will be fun to watch next year to see what they can do. I ultimately look for Utah and Arizona State to compete for the Pac-12 South title. Also throw in the Trojans in there somewhere. But Arizona State and Utah, I think, are in the driver's seat for the Pac-12 South. Herm Edwards, along with the addition of Marvin Lewis, I think can only help their chances to do some good things next year. I think Utah probably has the ultimate momentum and talent to get it done. But you could see Arizona State or USC sneak in there and challenge Utah for that Pac-12 South division. In the Pac-12 North, I think that Oregon is by far the best team. And I don't see anyone really competing against them for the Pac-12 North division. And ultimately, I think Oregon beats whoever comes out of the Pac-12 South. and can probably handle them pretty easily or pretty well. So those are my conference winners. I've got Georgia coming out of the SEC. I've got Penn State coming out of the Big Ten. I've got Clemson coming out of the ACC. I've got University of Texas coming out of the Big 12. And I have Oregon coming out of the Pac-12. In the next segment, I'm going to go over the Final Four, the playoffs, and perhaps some of the more interesting storylines that I think will end up taking place throughout the year. Sort of another way of making some fun predictions. And so when we come back... I will talk about that, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Before I get into the final four for next year, who I think it's going to be, I thought I'd maybe go over some storylines that I'm looking forward to the most in terms of watching them next year play out before our eyes and throughout the season. The first storyline that I'm actually interested in is the coaching carousel that's been going on this year. I think a lot of coaches have ended up at some new places that are interesting, as well as perhaps second and third year coaches and witnessing how they progress or develop as the year goes on. And I'll start in the state of Texas where I wouldn't call it a hot seat for Jimbo or Herman at A&M and the University of Texas, but I think this is a pivotal year for both of them to begin to show the fruits of their recruiting and getting their playbook in to their players for about two to three years now. And really to take that next step forward and show that they were the right coaches for the job and they were hired to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to win conference championships and to try and get to the playoffs. While again, I don't think it is a hot seat for either one of them because they will be around next year and the year after almost no matter what happens this year. I do think this is a pivotal year for both of them to see what they can do and to see if they are truly getting these programs headed in the right direction. And so I look for those two coaches at those particular universities to see which way they are going to be trending as the year goes on. And then to stay in Texas, I think it will be very interesting to see how Dave Aranda does at Baylor being the first year coach or his first year at Baylor coming in after Matt Rule. I think Baylor has a very good opportunity to do some good things next year. I think he's in a good state in terms of recruiting. And I think he's in a conference that overall definitely has some doors open that he could step through if he gets that team going in the right direction. I also think him being more of a defensive-minded coach is a good mix-up to the Big 12. And in the long run, I believe that that will help separate Baylor perhaps from some other schools in that conference. The next two schools I'm interested in looking at because they sort of right now have parallel stories is Mississippi State and Ole Miss with Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin respectively. While obviously this year will not tell us too much unless one of them has just sort of a breakout year, which I don't necessarily see happening, it will be interesting to see how these two guys influence the SEC going forward. They are both in the SEC West. And so I think that will bring a lot of entertainment and storylines to talk about in the future. Another storyline in the SEC West is to see how LSU will do after losing all their talent. I'm interested to see if Orgeron can get them back up on the horse and back to their undefeated ways. Obviously, I don't think they'll go undefeated this year, but if they were to end the year with one or two losses, I think that would be a great sign that Ed Orgeron is the guy to remain at LSU and to keep them winning big games in the future and to always be challenging Alabama for the top spot in the SEC West at the very least. Another school is Arizona State. Obviously, they have Herm Edwards over there. And with the addition of Marvin Lewis, it will be very fun to see how they can influence Arizona State and to see if they can really make some noise over there in the Pac-12 And the Pac-12, in my opinion, is hurting for some parity and some depth of play. And I think if they could bring that to Arizona State, 
that would be a great improvement for not just that school, but the conference overall. Obviously, I think if things begin to go in the right direction for Arizona State, then Marvin Lewis will probably head off somewhere else. But I think that Herm Edwards is probably there to stay unless just one of the top coveted spots comes and falls in his lap. I think it's safe to say that he will probably be at ASU for the foreseeable future. And I think he's obviously got that program trending in the right direction. Another team that I've talked about is North Carolina. I'm very interested to see how Mac Brown does with the Tar Heels. This will be his second year with the team and another year to get his offense in and his playbook in, as well as another year of decent recruiting for them, especially compared to what North Carolina typically does. I'm interested to see how North Carolina does this year. I look for them to make an improvement to take a step forward, and I think they will only continue to do that and hopefully start competing for ACC titles on a regular basis as long as he's there. And so those are my main storylines in terms of coaching. I think coaching is going to be an interesting topic to look at and talk about this year in terms of how they are doing. And I just find that coaching is going to be probably one of the more interesting storylines this year as we go forward. The next topic I quickly wanted to give a few comments on was the playoff setup. I know I'm not saying anything original or new when I say that I would prefer to do eight teams and have the Power 5 conference winners each get an automatic bid along with three at-large bids and have an eight-team playoff. I think this would make the playoffs much more exciting. I think we get another week of play, and it also ensures that all of the top teams are getting in. Now, to be honest, I think that the change to the four-team playoff system really has not changed anything. I think essentially the top two teams that would have been selected previously in the BCS rankings compared to the Final Four playoff have essentially been the same every year without much change in terms of the top one and two teams consistently making it to the finals. But the reason I say this is that if we're going to do a four-team playoff, then I say let's just go all the way and do an eight-team playoff. I don't think you should do any more than that. I think doing the five power conference winners along with three at-large bids would ensure that you are getting all of the top teams along with giving us another week of action. And of course, this would only be more revenue for the NCAA and things of that nature. But I think the players would still be for it as you'd have four more teams getting in. So therefore, I think... At the end, most people would say they would want it both in terms of the league and the amount of revenue they would make and the players in terms of more teams and therefore more people getting a shot at a title. And that's just my quick opinion on that before we go to the next segment. I also have mentioned this previously that the playoff selection committee I think has been mishandled a little bit in terms of the people they have selected to allow to vote. I know that People like Condoleezza Rice have been in it before, and I'm sure that she is very capable of problem solving and sort of coming to a conclusion or an answer that isn't necessarily much further off than what most quote-unquote experts would pick. But I would like to see it be regulated just to people within the NCAA or people who have played the game, coached the game, or have spent their entire lives around the game. I think it's a very cool honor to be on something like that, and so that's just kind of where I'm coming from on it. I think it should be seen as a privilege in terms of the football family being able to be a part of it, and so I think it would just be nice to keep it to football people and to that football family and let those people decide who they think is the best team or teams in college football that are able to go to the playoff. I also think that... In order to prevent biases from being formed, I know that they do the selection committee towards more or less the middle of the year, somewhere around there. And I think that as they get closer to voting time or putting a committee together, I think they should be picking people whose teams or alma maters don't really have a shot at making the playoff to sort of remove the bias Uh, I think this is just another way to keep it transparent. And instead of possibly having, let's just say, if a coach was formerly part of Penn State and Penn State looks like they have a chance to make the playoff, then I don't think he should be on the committee. Something like that. And so those are just my quick thoughts on the selection committee. 
when we come back for the next segment, I am actually going to go over how I think the playoffs will go down next year, who I think the top four will be, and I'll do a hypothetical top eight as if I had my way to pick uh, a eight-team playoff. So stay tuned, and we will make our way too early predictions for the college football playoff next year. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. segment here and we're going to do the typical way too early predictions as happens in every sport leading up to the beginning of a new year or at the end of a particular year and we are looking towards the future. I'm going to go ahead and act as if I was going to be able to do a top eight if I was part of the football selection committee for who I think the top eight teams will be next year. And then I will do a more serious top four as if we are going to be picking for next year. So in order to stay consistent with what I just said in the last segment, as long as with what I picked in terms of the conference winners earlier, let's go ahead and name the conference winners that would be in our top eight. That is going to be Clemson, Georgia, UT, Penn State, and Oregon. Now, I also think that if we are going to do the at-large bids, I also think that Notre Dame gets in, Ohio State gets in, Alabama gets in, and essentially that rounds out our top eight. I obviously don't think that another team from the Pac-12 would be worthy, nor do I think another team from the ACC would be worthy, nor do I think another team from the Big 12 would be worthy. So essentially, we would have an independent in Notre Dame making the top eight at an at-large bid. Alabama and Ohio State being the other two at large bids. And so if I'm going to go ahead and seed them in terms of one through eight, obviously you would have the five conference winners being ranked one through five. I think that Georgia has the best chance to go undefeated next year. And so I would probably have them at number one overall, maybe Clemson at number one if they go undefeated as well. But I think Georgia's strength of schedule would probably put them over Clemson. And by the way, I think Clemson and Georgia are the only two teams who have a real chance to go undefeated next year. Maybe Oregon, if they can get over that early game with Ohio State. I think everyone in the Big 12 gives each other a loss somewhere down the road. And I also think people within the Big 10 are going to give each other a loss somewhere down the road. And it could very well happen in the SEC as well. But I like Georgia's chances to come out undefeated. And obviously, I like Clemson's chances to come out undefeated as well. And so I think that Georgia will do it. And because of their strength of schedule, they will be my number one team. I then have Clemson at number two. I'm going to go ahead and put Oregon at number three. I think because they maybe only get one loss during the season to Ohio State, I think that probably they will end up number three. I will put Penn State at number four. I could easily see them flip-flopping, even though I think... It's possible that Penn State could win the Big Ten Championship with two losses at the end of that year. And then obviously I'm going to have Texas at number five. I think Texas could end up having two, maybe even three losses, depending. I just think the Big 12, they're going to muddy up the waters a little bit, but someone's got to come out on top, and I think that will be Texas. I also think the strength of schedule for whoever comes out of the Big 12 will not be as good, much like Oregon. So you know what? I'm actually going to make it Georgia number one, Clemson number two. I'm going to go ahead and put Penn State number three. And I'm going to put Oregon number four. I'm going to put UT number five. I am going to put Ohio State number six because I think their strength of schedule, and if they do lose, it will probably just be to a Penn State and maybe one other loss. I am then going to put 
Notre Dame at number seven. I think that if they get in, it's probably because they only lost one game this year, and that was to Clemson, which is a respectable loss. And I think they have a very good chance to run the table for all their other games. I'm then going to put Alabama in at number eight. Now, Alabama, obviously, I think A&M could play spoiler to them, or as well as LSU being able to bounce back from the amount of talent that they've lost. But again, I just don't see LSU being able to overcome everything that they've lost on both sides of the ball. And I guess if I was going to go ahead and be on the committee, I probably would put Alabama at number seven and Notre Dame at number eight. And I would do this just so Alabama and Georgia don't have to play each other in the first round. And I just think it would be a better product and better entertainment if those guys played each other in later rounds instead of the first round, since they're both in the SEC already. That's just something small that I would do. Uh, I would do that for any conference. If there was two teams out of the same conference that looked like they were going to play each other in the first round, I would see if it would be possible to sort of switch up the rankings and order to have them not play each other in the first round. I just think that's sort of redundant or kind of repetitive if you're having teams like that sort of knock each other out in the first round. I'd rather perhaps see them both get to the second round and then play each other. So that being said, I would reseed Notre Dame to the eighth seed, and I would also move Ohio State down to the seventh seed and move Notre Dame up to the sixth seed. That way, Penn State and Ohio State don't play each other as well. And again, this is just a very experimental thing I'm doing. So perhaps you could also reseed, you know, Penn State and Oregon instead of moving Notre Dame up a spot or two. And there's several ways you could go about it. But for now, I'm just going to keep interconference people out of a position to where they have to play each other in the first round. I just think that makes for better drama and better TV. Obviously, I would have Georgia beating Notre Dame in the first round. I would also have Clemson beating Ohio State in the first round, even though I think that would be an incredible first round matchup. That would get a lot of eyeballs on the TV as well, be a rematch from last year. And then I would also have Penn State beating Notre Dame, although I think Notre Dame is possibly going to be one of the surprise teams next year. But I have Penn State beating Notre Dame, and then I have Oregon and UT, and I am probably going to go ahead and just go chalk with Oregon, even though I think that could be a very interesting game, and if Texas can get rolling late with Tom Herman like they did last year, they could be a scary first-round matchup for whoever has to play them. So I have Georgia, Clemson, Penn State, and Oregon essentially in the top eight making it to the final four i would have georgia i think beating oregon pretty handily and i think clemson would also beat penn state and so essentially my one and two teams just as if they were in the fbs rankings i have georgia and clemson playing each other i think georgia with the addition of their quarterback newman i think georgia essentially is the team to beat next year and i have them essentially winning it all no matter how you want to break it down now if i go top four i think it's a little different Different. I got Georgia and Clemson obviously still in at one and two. I think Penn State is going to do enough to get in as well. However, I do think that Notre Dame has a chance to squeeze in at the fourth spot instead of an Oregon or a UT. Mainly because I think Notre Dame has a good chance to either go undefeated or only have one loss to Clemson, which of course is a very good loss if that's your only loss. And so therefore, the top eight may be a little different than the top four because I think it's quite possible that Oregon could lose maybe one or two games but still win the Pac-12 championship. Same with UT. Heck, even the same with Penn State. But I think Notre Dame has a good chance to go with only one loss next year and have that one loss being to the number one or two team in the nation at the end of the year would bode very well for them. And so possibly I could see Notre Dame sneaking into my top four in terms of a traditional college football playoff that we've had the last few years. And so I have Georgia, Clemson, Penn State. I'm going to put Notre Dame in at number four next year to make it to the playoffs. Probably Penn State and Notre Dame are going to surprise some people. Obviously, Ohio State could easily make it in instead of Penn State. And I could obviously see a Oregon getting in over Notre Dame as well if Notre Dame picks up two losses. Notre Dame has to only have one loss next year if they want to make it to the playoff, in my opinion. 
because they do not play a conference championship at the end of the year, which helps a lot of teams out. And I do not think UT or an Oklahoma or a Baylor are going to get in in the top four either. So I essentially have Georgia as my team to beat next year with Clemson coming in on their heels at number two. Then you could go either way with Penn State, Ohio State. You could go either way with Oregon and Notre Dame. And so essentially that ranks out how I would do it if I could pick a top eight as well as the traditional final four for next year in my way too early predictions. And so that's going to do it for us tonight. As always, I appreciate you guys for listening in. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Please remember to subscribe to the show, write a review that really helps us grow our footprint. If you could also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, that always helps. And so I want to say thank you and have a good day or night whenever you're listening to this and wherever you are. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts College Football Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from football to basketball, baseball to MMA. MMA, and even soccer. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts College Football Podcast.